What's happening people, how's it going? It is great to be back in the kitchen making fitness videos. Today's video, it's gonna be a full week of eating. Now that might sound fucking wild, maybe it is wild. Myself, pretty much every other fitness book on YouTube, we've all done like a million days of eating. And at least personally, I choose to do them on uneventful days just for convenience to make it easier to film and stuff. So usually I'm sat in my apartment just working on my laptop all day. And that's not really difficult to hit your macros in those situations, you know what I mean? We can all stay on track when we have a predictable routine. The difficulty lies in applying dietary protocols through the chaos and unpredictability of everyday life. And so I figured maybe if I take you through the whole week, we might get a better representation of that. I'm gonna try and keep this video from being a week long. So if it's an uneventful day, I'm just gonna show you the food that I ate and the macros. If it's the time when I actually have to make conscious efforts to stay on track, I will vlog that shit, include it. Hopefully we'll like make a good video. Who knows, I'm gonna try. So let's kick off with macros. 3,100 calories, 426 grams of carbs, 194 protein and 69 fat. I'm gonna use this week to semi kind of test my maintenance calories. I think 3,100 should be there or thereabouts. I may even lose a little bit of weight on that, I'm not sure. I weighed myself this morning. This is what happened. That was probably gonna be a little bit lighter than most of my weigh-ins because I weighed myself like fairly late in the morning, later than I would usually weigh myself. Anyway, let's do a quick physique update. I look all right, but to be honest, this is not an accurate physique update. It's not a real one. I'm just doing it to show that I do fitness still. Um, but we've got a natural light coming that way. So I actually look a lot leaner than, than I really am. So anyway, that's it. Let's do it. By far the most important factor in regards to your nutrition and your physique development is going to be your total calories, protein, carbs, fats and micronutrients at the end of each day. So your totals for those far outweigh any of this subsequent shit that I'm going to talk about. This is a post gym cookie. Uh, it was a present, and when you get cookies as presents off your girlfriend, you should eat them. Just as a, as a general rule in life, I'm gonna have to Google the calories and macros for this. Tiny. We're gonna get sushi. The protein in sushi is gonna be fairly low. Certainly not enough to hit my protein for the day. Considering I'm so far, far behind as well, because I've only literally had like one proteinous meal today and then snacks. So, I'm gonna have a shake before it. A big one, mate. Hey, babe. Mm. 
is there an optimal number of meals that's going to provide some kind of long-term advantage in respect to overall body composition a lot of this essentially is going to depend on nutrient timing uh, which we'll, we'll come to later but for now just a couple of considerations to make more frequent smaller meals don't seem to have any kind of effect on your metabolic rate over the same amount of calories in fewer less frequent large meals that whole kind of myth about if you're cutting you should eat six meals a day because it's going to kick start your metabolism bullshit anything you eat it's going to acutely raise my metabolic rate because that's what happens when you eat things but that acute reaction isn't going to translate into a higher tde or a higher calorie expenditure for me over the course of the day the second consideration is more one of satiety three meals have been shown to be more satisfying than six meals per day at least in obese men uh, another study showed that fewer than three meals per day was less satiating than three but above three didn't seem to be that much better so no real significant difference taking these into account i would say if you struggle with satiety if you're cutting or your appetite is such that you even struggle sticking to maintenance or bulking cows i'd probably stick on around three or four meals per day at least if we're just considering those things quick caveat to that forget the three to four meal thing just for a second i know a lot of people will utilize intermittent fasting particularly when dieting uh, and be able to see very good results on that so primarily that is an adherence thing it's just a result of this method making it easier to stick to calories uh, rather than it being superior in any way actually it's not been shown to be superior at least when in a, in a deficit um, over just regular energy restrictive diets the real reason it helps people is because sticking to a potentially suboptimal routine will often yield better results than having the perfect optimal routine and not being able to stick to it in general um, adherence should be a priority and so a routine that enables easy adherence is you know that's a, that's a big plus for it and you could probably allow for some other areas to be slightly suboptimal uh, as a trade-off for that ease of adherence a couple of the reasons why it's easy to stick to your diet when you're fasting is because for one at least through personal experience stopping eating is often harder than just not eating in the first place so particularly if you're on a calorie restricted diet and your portions aren't particularly satiating because your total calories aren't, aren't very high you'll find that after your meal the tendency to carry on and to keep snacking and just going over a little bit that urge is, is very hard to resist uh, and often it's kind of a floodgates scenario where once you start it's very hard to stop another reason is that when you're fasting you kind of realize and learn how hunger comes in waves that's why people say i'm experiencing a bout of hunger because it's actually usually just quite a brief thing you might feel hungry but if you wait it out you'll find that it just passes uh, more often than not anyway and, and once you learn that and you understand that that's what happens it's actually much easier to hold off and you'll find yourself less likely to actually succumb to that hunger so yeah just a couple of reasons why intermittent fasting is potentially better for adherence so if adherence is an issue it might be something worth trying what's happening people it is day three and day two was a little bit of a fuck up i'll tell you why i forgot to track that cookie that i showed you and also a glass of wine that i had with my sushi so i'm just gonna track those onto today's so that my average calories will work out right for the week if i'd overshot on protein i wouldn't really be able to take that off the next day because your protein intake your protein requirement is your protein requirement but since it's pretty much just non-nutritious calories it's fine to just take it off the next day uh, we're going water skiing today i've got a birthday party later so it's very like off schedule shit. so i've got a breakfast with me in the car 
which is a protein shake, a bagel, an apple, and a tangerine. I actually weighed myself this morning and I was like fucking heavy as fuck. Well, I reckon it's because I overate a little bit yesterday. I had very high volume foods loaded towards the back end of the day. I also weighed myself a lot earlier. Also, I had a fuck ton of sushi, which means I had a fuck ton of soy sauce, which means I had a fuck ton of sodium, which means I'm holding a fuck ton of water. That's a lot of fucks. See you later. So we're about to head out to a party, so I'm gonna sign out for the day. I've got quite a lot of cows left. I'm putting like about 500 cows aside for canapes because I'll probably be. I'm not gonna drink, so. That's it, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, let's talk about nutrient timing. This would cover questions like assuming total protein intake is equated, would it be beneficial to consume the majority of that protein pre and post workout as opposed to evenly distributed over four meals per day? Or is it better to consume the majority of my carbs early on in the day? Uh, and are all these things gonna contribute to long-term differences in body composition, i.e. fat loss and muscle gain? All right, before we get into this bit, I'm just gonna go through some quick terms. Muscle protein synthesis, which we can equate to making gains. Muscle protein breakdown, which we can call losing gains. These things are pretty much constantly occurring just at different rates. And the net result of the making and losing gains, the muscle protein synthesis and breakdown, is muscle protein balance. So in this case, it doesn't mean balance as in it's balanced, as in you never make any gains, unless you're me. I never make gains. What it means is balance as in the balance, the bottom line, as in the net result. So hopefully we want that to be positive. So there's a lot of talk, uh, you see it a lot on adverts and stuff like that. You see post-workout drinks that are gonna replenish your glycogen stores. Whilst it's true that higher glycemic index foods will replenish glycogen stores faster than lower GI foods, is that necessary uh, or is it in any way advantageous to us in terms of body composition? Probably not. So the only situations that you would really need to be rushing to replenish your glycogen stores would be if you have more physically demanding activity coming up later in the day or you know fairly soon after you finish training. Another thing is that resistance training doesn't actually deplete those stores in any way the same kind of level as aerobic exercise does. Do you need to rush to hit some sugars as soon as you finish training? Probably not. The other effect of eating high GI foods post-workout is that you'll get an insulin spike. So pretty much when you eat any food, there will be some kind of insulin response. Uh, the degree of which will depend on the food and that's where your glycemic index comes from. You need some insulin because it can help to inhibit muscle protein breakdown, i.e. stop you losing gains. However, the amount you need is actually relatively low, uh, and you would get that as a response to pretty much any post-workout meal with mixed macros. It's also a case of it plateauing at a certain amount of insulin, beyond which it's not like you really get that much benefit. So at least in terms of your overall body composition and from, from a bodybuilding perspective, you don't really need to worry about seeking out specifically high GI foods for post-workout. You could just go home, have pretty much any dinner or lunch or whatever it is you're having and you would hit that amount. Pre-workout carbs, definitely a good idea if you are an aerobic athlete. 
It's been much less studied in terms of the impact it will have on resistance training and your performance in the gym. Theoretically, some blood glucose uh, would slow down glycogen depletion and hopefully result in better performance with your lifts. One caveat I would say, it might be a good idea to stay away from high GI foods if you are someone who experiences sugar crashes. I think I do. So I tend to stick with fruits that are higher or that have a high proportion of their sugars from fructose as fructose elicits a much smaller insulin response than other sugars. The sign people, so it's day four. I'm gonna take you through the end of day three. So I went to a party, which is one of those off schedule times that I said I was gonna include in this video. I saved about, well, I had about 1,200 calories left when I went. I reckon I ate about five or 600 worth of, about five or 600 calories worth of canapes. I also had a gin and tonic, so I've tracked 500 calories as just quick add calories in my fitness pile. I've also tracked a gin and slimline tonic. I was convinced into takeaway food when we got home, so I went for the most trackable option, which was just a chicken pitta. So I tracked a Nando's chicken pitta for that because the, there isn't one for just like random takeaways. So you just have to get the best fit. I ended up there or thereabouts pretty much. I was a little bit lighter this morning. Fuck it, let's just do day four, man. Is there a protein window within which we must consume protein after a workout or else that workout will go to waste? Common knowledge pretty much these days is that this is obviously a lot less important than it once seemed. Now, there have been studies that have said, yes, eating protein around your workout seems to be advantageous over each end of the day. There's also been studies that have opposed that, uh, although they did include creatine. In general though, there is not a substantial body of evidence that points towards the necessity of consuming protein within a certain time period. Going back to what I said initially, by far the most important factor is your total protein intake over the course of the day or over the course of the re recovery period after each resistance training session. There are probably some people for which a protein window is, is more of a factor. If you train first thing in the morning, so essentially fasted, or if you're training, if you're doing intermittent fasting and you're training in the afternoon having not eaten all day, uh, you will be much more in need of a protein containing meal. A meal in general, because your muscle protein bro breakdown will be a much more elevated level than if you weren't fasted, than somebody who trains you know, a couple of hours after a meal or something. There's certainly no disadvantage to post-workout protein and the majority of us are able to eat after we've trained, uh, especially if you're just distributing your meals fairly evenly throughout the day. Most of us can train, come home, cook a meal and eat, uh, and if you can, do so. If you can't, I would suggest trying to eat before your workout, if that's possible. Because if you think about it, depending on the the specific foods in that meal, your digestion and absorption can take you way into the post-workout period, really, and so that can effectively be used as your post-workout meal. Failing that, I would just have some BCAAs or some kind of high-quality protein before training, just a shake, a drink, whatever you can. You certainly don't need to be finishing your workout, neck in a shake, and then going home and making your post-workout meal. You know, that, that shake at that time is unnecessary.
car big. <laughs> Here's the car big. Sometimes after a workout, you just can't wait for food. So you have to have car bagels. A car bagel is a bagel in the car. It's essential to post workout nutrition. So to know how to distribute our protein, what we really need to know is, is there a optimal amount of protein to eat per meal that's gonna give us the best results long term? Could we just eat all of our protein in one go? Is it better to graze and pick up bits and bobs of protein or what? So in terms of maximizing muscle protein synthesis, AKA making gains, it seems that you need a minimum amount of leucine to do that. How much protein provides you with that amount of leucine depends on the protein source. So typically uh, 40 grams is going to do it for most of us. Obviously your requirements will differ depending on your fat free mass. There was a study that actually suggested 20 grams of protein was enough to maximally spike muscle protein synthesis. There was another that actually said 40 grams is better than 20, so I would probably err on the side of caution and go with the 40. It also seems that you need a period of four to six hours between protein doses to enable you to maximize muscle protein synthesis. So all this comes down to is eat four meals a day, evenly distribute your protein throughout those meals. How you distribute your carbs and fat is actually gonna be much less important. So if you find that it's not convenient for you to cook a, a meal right now, but it's time for you to have another protein hit, AKA four to six hours after your last one, you just have a shake and then make up your carbs and fats whenever in the next meal if you like, uh, through snacks, whatever you want. Typically, I actually tend to load most of my carbs and fats and also my calories uh, towards the end of the day. That's just a personal preference because I feel like uh, eating a lot of carbs early on in the day gives me it's a, it's a lot of digestive um, demand and I don't really want to sit there feeling full and you know I, I feel a lot more kind of mentally alert if I just have a, a protein here and then a bit of fruit in the morning. You will have seen that uh, it, over these days of eating. Regardless of that, protein distribution will typically stay at even doses four to six hours apart over the course of four meals per day. Good morning. Today is another off scheduled day. I'm down in London doing a photo shoot, so I don't know what I'm gonna eat really. I expect it's just gonna be grabbing a load of bites from shops and stuff like that. So we'll just have to see what we can do. Uh, I might end up having a lot of macros left towards the end of the day, but that's not too bad. So anyway, before we go, I'm starting with a protein shake, banana, and one of those bagels. Oh, they smell good. Okay, let's do it. We're back in the kitchen after a long day. It was a long day for me, it wasn't a long day for you. It was just like a few clips after I ate what I showed you this morning. I also had some dates on the train. I didn't plan to eat, but then I was walking around Sainsbury's because I had time to kill before my train. And I saw these dates and in Sainsbury's they keep them in the fridge, which means they go like all hard and like oh, just harder, they're just fucking next level shit, so got involved in some of them. Also, some lad just passed me a quest bar and I was like, I will fucking eat that straight away because I was very hungry by the time. Uh, and I just failed to film it, so apologize, apologies for that. And then went fully in on a ruthless Nando's. Then had some watermelon in the car on the way back. Basically, I just ate how fucking wanted to. It was dead easy, man. I don't know what lesson is here. The lesson is just don't panic, man. The lesson is just don't panic. If in doubt, don't eat anything for a bit and then wait until an opportunity arises to eat something that's not shit. 
We've got a few cars left, so I'm gonna have yogurt and fruit. Quick note on vitamins and minerals, aka micronutrients. It goes without saying that before you can make any kind of physical improvement, a base level of health must be maintained just for all your typical day-to-day -day bodily functions. And for that, you need to be consuming adequate vitamins and minerals. That's just irrespective of bodybuilding. Ensuring that you are consuming enough vitamins and minerals not to develop deficiencies is just a basic part of being an adult, isn't it? It's just, that's, that's the baseline minimum that you should really expect from yourself. There hasn't been much study into it, but it's likely that if you have a more physically demanding lifestyle, then some of your requirements for those vitamins and minerals will be higher than the typical daily recommendation. It's hard, although it's possible, uh, particularly with fat soluble vitamins, it's hard to really overdose. Um, and so just eat plenty of fruit and veg pretty much. The difference between water soluble and fat soluble vitamins is that fat soluble, well, obviously they are soluble in fat, um, but what that equates to is that they can typically stay in your system a little longer and so you have to be more conscious of replacing your water soluble vitamins because they will be excreted uh, much more quickly. Eat your fruit and veg, just, you know, be healthy, man. Generally, I think it's a good idea to have in stock plenty of foods that are particularly high in one macro, but low in the other two. So protein sources like egg whites that you'll see me in the, in the morning, protein shakes, all, all your other lean protein sources, uh, carbs like bagels, dates, all the fruits that you see me snacking on, um, and then fat sources, which are admittedly harder to get foods that are just fat but stuff like avocados, nuts, they're really as close as you're going to get for that. Um, what these allow you to do is check your macros as you're going through the day and then if you're particularly behind on a specific macro, you can make that up with snacks as you go through. So, for example, because I eat quite a low carb breakfast, often I'll find myself with a lot of carbs left to eat at the end of the day. I do prefer it like that, but you don't want too many because I don't want to be having to cook like 250 grams of rice and crazy shit like that. So what I'll do is check through the day, if I'm particularly behind, I'll buy some dates, I'll have some bagels, all that kind of stuff. So foods that are quite mixed in terms of the macro content, I would say eat them towards the front end or like the middle of the day, because otherwise if you're trying to fit a protein bar in at the end of the day, you're gonna have to meticulously plan that so that you have like the perfect amount of protein, carbs and fats left to hit. It's gonna be a lot more of a ball ache than if you just ate it earlier and then filled in the gaps with these single macronutrient foods. That's basically an argument for why bagels are sick, mate.
end of week physique update in that half matty light just the same mate just the same as the start of the week because it's only been a week and so you're not really going to see any difference I mean you would probably see a difference if it was like actively cutting and doing a good job of it but since I'm eating around maintenance it's you know this, these aren't legit physique updates just me in my kitchen when we top off so in terms of my actual body weight and body fat percentage they were both the same this morning which was day eight technically as they were on the very first day so even that being the case you couldn't really say that I'm eating at maintenance not with any degree of certainty anyway because it's just too short of a time frame for any discrepancies between what you're eating and your TDE to show themselves on the scales obviously if the scales go massively up or down you know that you're above or below maintenance but if you're anywhere around maintenance they'd be roughly the same a week later anyway so ideally if you're gonna actually test your maintenance through through trial and error like that um, I would give it at least two weeks maybe three to be honest so the longer the better obviously so aside from that there isn't that much to say I mean I hope you saw some good food it was alright wasn't it I'd say pretty normally this week but whatever if you want actual exact amounts of every meal you can go to my fitness pal check I'm pretty sure my diary is like open to the public so you can just see what I'm eating on the daily uh, if you have any questions then feel free to put them in the comments and I will try to answer them if I don't know I will say yo I don't know and then maybe someone else can answer them so that's it have a sick day have a sick night like my shit if you like it don't don't give me a disingenuous like uh that's it just take it easy man i need a catchphrase man you can't ramble at the end of every video i've seen a bit jordy lenny is my hero